to create a new TwinCard project, we open TwinCard 3 and create a new project. We give it a name. And Visual Studio is um, building up the solution on the left. And the solution contains everything from the system configuration, uh, I.O. and PLC programming, filters, everything. First step would be to connect to a specific target system. So, uh, for example, an IPC or a CX with some terminals connected to. And in my case, this is a system. Now I see that it's in config mode. So the blue is a config mode. The green is a run mode, the Twinkle system run. And as we are now configuring the whole system, we are staying in the blue. Uh, mode and you can also see on the on an IPC that the TC lamp is in a blue mode, so that gives you an indication that we are in configuration mode. If it's green in TwinCard and on the on the here's a, the blue can be seen here on top. It can also be seen here down there and um, also on the blue LED on the on the CX or IPC. So we are connected and we make a right click on devices in the IO section and we can scan and we will now scan for EtherCAD terminals. That's why we first unselect all these um, options and only select the EtherCAD device. We don't need any EAP or USB or whatever connections, we just take the EtherCAD. Yes, we want scan the boxes too. And then what it does, it send, sends a specific command from the EtherCAD master through the EtherCAD network. And there's um, all the terminals are answering with a with a name and, and some some location due to the commands um, in the EtherCAD. And we can activate the free run. So this terminal, all the terminals are running in an unsynchronized mode. Uh, but our, like for example, measurement terminals are in a measuring mode, but not synchronized via distributed clocks in this case. Now we see our um, I/O system I directly connected to my CX. I have some basic I/O, some digital terminals, and so on. And on an extended rack, rack I have an EKM coupler, so that's an isolated coupler with some ELM measurement terminals, some outputs. Uh, digital terminals and also ES3751. So that's a basic system. We can check if if our terminal is running. Just make a double click on the terminal and you see values are changing. So that's a good indication. In this case, I will just start my function generator and put in a um, just a basic signal of one hertz. So we see some changes. You see samples are going up and down in reasonable ranges. So, and now we want to configure this terminal to run at its full sample rate of 10 kilo samples. And the, the goal is to have a cycle time of one millisecond. We do the task configuration later, but we first configure the terminal and the terminal will then uh, have a micro 10, 100 microseconds um, sampling time. So that means we need a factor of 10 to get to the cycle time of, of one millisecond. And you immediately see that uh, from one sample, we get to 10 samples in total. So the output configuration to the PDO has directly changed. We will also use the COE configuration to uh, jump to the number eight you get directly to the samples of a specific channel. You configure it like you want. So in my case, there's a plus minus 10 volt configuration. Uh, I will first deactivate some, some filters. Filter bank one and two are now cleared. And so that's it. So that is the first configuration. And from the system configuration, we now 
first is, uh, go to the real time system and the real time system can have for example a base time of one millisecond so that means that uh, the internal so that the fastest internal time would be one millisecond and multi multiples of that can be um, cycle times for a PLC task for example but we can do it similar to your configuration we do a 200 microseconds cycle time and take a look on um, what what we, what we call the IO tasks later. To have some task here, we first need to insert a PLC. So the PLC is defining um, the configuration between, so what is done with the IO data and it also um, has a specific task and also it triggers the EtherCAD to start up. So we add a new PLC. You will see that with the creation of the PLC, a new task will be also created here. So you will see that this PLC task is then created and if we do a cycle time of one millisecond, so that's always a resulting cycle time, we have a cycle ticks of five. If we have one, we would operate with 200 microseconds cycle time, but we want to have a one millisecond and we enter five here. And to have the configuration, so the, the link between the IO world and the PLC program, we create, usually one is doing something like the GVL, global variable list. And in this GVL, you know, some measurement terminals for, you can group different IOs to specific groups. I will have this e IEL3751 terminal. And this is um, an input. This input configuration at percent I star defined as an array from zero to nine, so a full number of 10 values of double integers because this terminal is delivering data in D ints. So that's all what we need to do at the moment. We can compile this by building the solution and you see the PLC instance here on this, there's no instance, so there's no option to link the I.O. between the uh, PLC, but this is something that we do after the project has been built. So we build the solution, that takes a few seconds. And you see there's a message that no EtherCAD sync master is present. So we, we need to have a, a, like a heartbeat, something that, that wakes up the EtherCAD. And this is done by adding a link in the instance. So we, we see the PLC input in this GVL. This variable is not linked because you see that's an unlinked icon. You make a double click and have, have the option to link this array of data in the PLC with arrays that match the size. So that's important to configure the I.O. system that you have the, the corresponding variables in the right configuration available here. That's it. Just link it. Now you have the configuration ready. And now it's time to activate the configuration. So we put everything to the system. Yes, we want to start and run so that we change from blue to, to green in a second. Now it's in, in green run mode. We can check if the terminal is running okay. And if we see you see some identical values because it's a very low signal 
uh, only one, one hertz input, but we see all 10 values are changing cyclically. That's a good sign. That's running OK. And to do add a vis visualization, we will add a new project. And in this case, we do a twin cut YT scope. And mm, make it a bit clearer. So we go down to this data pool or directly the axis, whatever you like. And from here, we can start the target browser. And the target browser in the group measurement coming from the GVL, you have the array of these values. Drag and drop it to the access group. And now we can start the record button. See, that's a nice signal. And you have a plus minus, we have an amplitude of one volts, and that correlates to um, this um, seven, eight, 1250 number, so a lot, roughly 780,000 uh, in this range. That's a plus one volts and minus one volts. A very nice signal. We can check if um, if the number of data points is correct. For that, we stop that data and, for example, from 100 to 150 milliseconds. A bit clearer here, and we can also change this number. And for that, check we will see the number of data points. In one milliseconds from here to here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten values. So we have a 10 kilo samples data rate. So that's it. And this is what we need to configure. And now we can do some analysis with the filters. We can also um, directly create a filter project in here, filter designer project some TC measurement filters. And here you can configure your terminal as desired. And as soon as you want to um, make this terminal um, to work within, in, within a terminal, so this filter within a terminal, you need to enable the terminal options. And the terminal options define on which channel and which filter position one or two this filter is going to. I'll make a right click and transfer the filter set. And if you have a corresponding or the a, a proper firmware version on your system, then you can select a target type. And target type would be I.O. The target system. It's running in here, the same system as we have connected to in the TwinCut environment. And we scan it, and we will see all the terminals where we can put this filter on. And for example, this would be filter 1 on channel 1. Download or transfer this filter to the target. And yes, I want to continue. And yes, I want to save the filter in the EEPROM. You see it trans successfully transferred, so everything is running OK. And yeah, now my system is running with a specific filter value. Good. I think that's it. Should be a first starting point. And let me know if you have any questions.